Um, it's always tougher to be the second speaker when everybody's given the same topic because uh, the material is bound to overlap somewhat. Uh, so in going through some of the same material, um, I might try to respond a little bit to some of the things that Dr. Blank has said. You know, this the restart of relations with Russia, um, that this summit uh, this month um, really, uh, you know, is supposed to, it's, it's the, um, it's the paradigm of, right? It's the, um, it's the example. It's, it's something that we've seen forming in U.S. foreign policy over the last couple of years. It's this new consensus. It's a new conventional wisdom, which um, is that the relationship with Russia is important to U.S. interests, that the previous administration has botched that relationship, and a new approach is needed, one that does take a long, hard look at where common interests lie, and one that tries to work with Russia to resolve the areas of disagreement that Dr. Blank has um, delineated. And, you know, the arms control agreement fits into that because almost everybody came up with arms control as a great example of common interests, which it is. It's also, of course, a very good example of divergent interests. Um, in the case of missile defense, on the question of how Russia sees the U.S. arsenal, how the U.S. sees Russia's arsenal. Um, and all of this is, uh, is very important to the neighbors in Europe and as well as to the United States and Russia themselves because this relationship is very important to them. Now, I have read and I have heard people all over the world express disappointment in the statement on arms control particularly because it did not resolve a lot of the issues on the table. It identified them and it basically said to the negotiators, this is going to be your problem you have until December, <laughs> enjoy. On the other hand, if you look at that statement and if you look at the other statements that came out of the summit, you do have a sense that Moscow and Washington are ready to give it a shot, that there is an interest in trying to find ways through it. And I think, um, I think that's very important because I think that it's going to be tough and it's going to be hard to maintain this, this view because these two countries do disagree on a lot. But there are a good number of common interests, including nonproliferation. Uh, you know, Russia and the United States agree that Iran and North Korea ought not to be nuclear weapon states. They have consistently disagreed on how you go about getting there. And you can certainly make the argument that with regards to Iran, Russia might be a little more of the position that if Iran is going to be nuclear, it would rather be friendly with that Iran than unfriendly. But, you know, best, best case scenario is Iran is not nuclear. Um, so the reasons for the neighbors to be interested in good relations between Russia and the United States, the reason the neighbors have a stake in this, is that for, you know, it varies a bit by country. But look, Russia's European. You can't say Europe is expanding into Russia because Europe is a continent and half of Russia is in Europe, you know, all the way to the Urals, a lot of the population. Um, this also means that countries, for a country like Ukraine, its two most important relationships are going to be with Russia and the EU. So it's great that Ukraine and the United States have a good relationship, but Ukraine's ability to rely on that in any way as a counter, in any way as something that might make up for a good relationship with Russia, it's, it's just not feasible. So what Ukraine needs, what Poland needs, what Germany needs, is the U.S. and Russia talking to each other and trying to resolve their differences, even as these countries take part in discussions with Russia to resolve their own differences and to pursue their own common interests. Um, I would also say that it's really important that the arms control stuff does work. It's a tough job, but it's a very important job. Because if there isn't progress on this arms control treaty, and I think both uh, the Russians and the Americans understand this, the two countries come to the NPT conference without anything to show credibility to the NPT itself. And that makes it very difficult for them to put pressure on any other countries to stay non-nuclear, to not develop nuclear weapons. It also means that if you have progress at, um, on arms control over the next year, you have laid the groundwork for progress on other sorts of arms control. You've laid the groundwork for more reductions of nuclear weapons on the one hand. Eventually, over time, there are a lot of issues in how you would go to considerably lower numbers, but you at least make it possible because you've brought back traditional arms control. 
And I would argue you lay the groundwork for other sorts of arms control, such as conventional arms control, which involve the Western and Eastern European states and which are of great interest to them. Dmitry Medvedev, the president of Russia, has talked about a new European security framework. What his vision of that framework is may not be what Poland's vision of that framework is, may not be what Ukraine's vision is, may not be what Germany's vision is. But he's right that the conversation is necessary. He's right that the old frameworks aren't doing the job they need to do. So having that discussion, I think, is made a lot easier if arms control goes forward with the United, between the United States and Russia and if the relationship as a whole improves. I also want to talk a little bit about missile defense, because missile defense is generally raised as the big problem. And the two presidents, Russia's and uh, the, that of the United States, issued a very careful statement on missile defense. It is a statement that says we will look for ways to cooperate. We will look for ways to resolve the problems. And I think it's important to understand what the problem is. The problem is that Russia maintains a nuclear arsenal in part, in large part, to deter the United States. You know, you can argue that it's a political decision that it needs to do that, that part of it that, you know, that it's about maintaining prestige, keeping a seat at the table, all of that. But you know, once you've got a nuclear arsenal, once you've got any sort of weapons, you plan to use them, you think about how to use them, you think about what they're for. And for Russia, they are a major, the massive strategic arsenal is about deterring the United States. It's about keeping the United States from attacking Russia. It is about keeping the United States from coercing Russia because it can attack Russia. And the way that things are laid out now, what Russia, why Russia worries about missile defense is, I mean, it's, it's very simple sort of basic nuclear tactics, right? The United States can launch an attack on Russia. It can take out a lot of Russia's weapons. And what weapons Russia has left might not be able to overcome the missile defenses that, although many in America don't think the system will work. People in Russia, you know, they're not so sure. So Russia is worried about its capacity to retaliate against a U.S. nuclear strike. And you know, in some ways this seems ridiculous in this day and age. But talk to nuclear planners anywhere and everywhere, this, these are the terms in which they think. And for Russia, it is a major security issue, not so much because they think the United States is going to attack, but because they see the United States as being in a so much stronger position that coercion on any number of issues becomes possible. Um, and what I think is very interesting about this is the United States is undertaking a review of its ballistic missile defense program. If the United States backs off on its missile defense plans, it will not be because Russia pressured the U.S. to do so. It will be because the United States has decided that this is not an effective system. And indeed, there are real questions uh, to be asked about the effectiveness, the cost effectiveness of this system. But you know, these aren't the only two countries involved in this decision. Poland and the Czech Republic have their own views, which have shifted with um, succeeding governments, and their publics have their own views. And the way that all of us uh, resolve this issue is going to, once again, affect the development of this new European security architecture. It affects how relations evolve. So, you know, missile defense, it's important for getting this treaty, and it's also important in its own right for helping to set, uh, set the framework for future European relations. And I think I'll stop there um, and take questions.